Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So this is the second part of the video, which is related to the capital receipt and the revenue receipt. In the first part, we discussed about the capital expenditure and the revenue expenditure. And if you haven't watched that part, please uh, click on the link which is given below in the description box and see that capital expenditure versus the revenue expenditure first. Try to solve some of the questions, and once the questions are solved, move on to the next part which is the capital receipt versus the revenue receipt i am afzal shahad and i am the teacher for business and accounting for the cambridge labors in islamabad so let us start with the capital receipt and the revenue receipt what is capital receipt a capital receipt is the amount received from the sale of non current asset so previously we discussed about the capital expenditure it is exact opposite of that that a capital receipt is an amount which is received from the sale of a non current asset capital receipt is related to non current asset capital expenditures were related to non current asset in terms of expenditure capital receipt is related to non current asset in terms of receipt so amount received from the sale of non current asset or the receipts which do not reoccur in the same accounting period sometimes were not buying the non current assets but some receipts are not related to the same accounting year many times so you are not repeating it's not reoccurring on the same accounting period examples of the capital receipts are amount received from the sale of an old plant and machinery so if you are receiving an amount from a sale of a non current asset it is going to be capital receipt amount received from issue of debentures you are issuing the debentures and all of the amount that is received against that debenture will be termed as a capital receipt amount received from specific donations so donations are not coming in every second or third month it's not a reoccurring in nature a specific donation we're not talking about general donations we're talking about specific donations and specific donations are normally in a larger quantities in a larger amount so these specific donation can be termed as a capital receipt but in the paper it will be very much clear that it is reoccurring in nature or not amount received from the mortgage of a property you do not mortgage property for every second or third month you mortgage it once in a blue moon so any amount that is received against the mortgage of a property you are not selling a property but mortgaging it getting a loan against that it is going to be the part of capital receipt and then amount received from a long term bank loan non current assets and long term bank loan is a non current or long term liability so capital receipt is related to non current assets in one way or long term liabilities in another way so you, we are over here talking about the long term things long term assets and long term liabilities non current assets long term liabilities the same thing revenue receipt revenue receipt in another hand is a mini amount received from a normal day to day trading activities of the business any other amount that is not related to the capital receipt is going to be the part of revenue receipt what is revenue receipt let's take an example the amount received on the sale of an inventory inventory means purchases and sales when you are selling an inventory you call it sales so it's a day to day operation the revenue receipt is amount receiving from an inventory an inventory is not a non current asset it's a current assets so that means it's not related to the capital and if it is not related to the capital obviously it is related to the revenue discount received from trade payables for prompt payment trade receivables or trade payables is it current in nature or non current in nature or a long term in nature so if it is current or short term it is revenue if it is long term it is capital so trade payables are basically are a short term of a nature and that is why it is termed as a revenue receipt commission received from the manufacturer a manufacturer is giving you a commission on the sales of that equipment of his equipment so the amount of that commission is normally less and a commission is normally termed as an indirect revenue or it is termed as a short term revenues or you can call it it reoccurs it can reoccur again and again because whenever you are going to sell up anything from a manufacturer that is he is going to give you a commission and it is reoccurring in nature that is why it is a revenue receipt finance income received from the bank of england financing financing income that means you have financed or you have uh, invested somewhere or you have financed in some particular project and you are getting an income for that that income will keep on coming to you after every second or third month or a year that is 
that is why it is called as a revenue receipt income fed that financing is a revenue receipt entrance fee for or membership fee received from the members you keep on getting the fee from the members and it is a smaller in amount and that is why it is called as a revenue receipt and it is not related to the non current asset so all of these examples are not related to the non current or long term liability so that is why we call it as a revenue receipt short term capital long term revenue with a short term so let's quickly differentiate between the capital and revenue expenditure capital revenue ex capital ex receipts it is amount received from the sale of a non current asset sale of non current asset whereas revenue other than non current asset like the current things in current inventories amount received from a day to day running activities like if you are selling an inventory if you are getting an income from commission if you are getting income from anywhere else it is going to be a revenue receipt but if you are getting an income from non current asset or if you are getting if you are selling a non current asset that means it is a capital receipt second point is the amount received is usually more in capital receipt the amount is normally high and in revenue receipts the normally the amount the value of the amount is normally low so if we say that you have received 40 dollars or 50 dollars by selling of a machinery you cannot call it as a capital receipt because the amount is pretty low the income from selling of a machinery is for 50 dollars so you cannot say that it is going to be capital receipt because the amount is really low third point is it is a non recurring receipt it will not reoccur in one financial period normally so it is specific in nature but the revenue receipts keep on occurring every second or third or fourth month fourth point is it appears in the statement of financial position and the revenue receipt is a part of income statement so just like we discussed about the capital ex expenditure and revenue expenditure capital expenditure was the part of statement of financial position similarly capital receipt is a part of statement of financial position so anything that has a word capital capital expenditure capital receipt is going to be the part of statement of financial position so anything that has a word of re uh, revenue revenue receipt revenue expenditure this is going to be the part of income statement okay let's see an example this is one of the most important things which is going to be the part of igcsc or a levels papers that how to segregate between the capital and revenue receipt from a single receipt so you need to segregate and we will discuss three different scenarios that how you are going to allocate the costs to the revenue receipts or the capital receipt so let's say take, take an example we bought a motor vehicle at the cost price of 5000 remember cost price is 5000 and you can see the first bar of, on the lower right corner which is in red that is showing the 5000 value of the cost of the motor vehicle after three years of usage we have decided to dispose it and on that the, the book value stands at 2500 the bar in yellow is showing the value of the book value so it is showing you the book value so first scenario is we sold that motor vehicle for 2000 the book value is 2500 you sold that vehicle in 2000 and the bar in green is telling you that it is less than the book value so that means it's a loss so the in the book value according to you the value of the asset was 2500 today but you were able to sell that asset in 2000 that means you have incurred a loss of 500 got it okay now how would you treat this in a would will you treat it is in a capital receipt or a revenue receipt so if the sale price is lower than the book value or indirectly you say you are incurring a loss the sale price is treated as capital receipt so whatever the price is it is going to be treated as capital receipt remember this i repeat that if the sale price is lower than the book value indirectly you are incurring the loss that means the sale price is going to be treated as capital receipt now second scenario is the same scenario same cost price same book value the book value of an asset was 2500 but this time you were able to sell that asset in 4500 that means you are incurring a profit so if the sale price is greater than your book value or in other time we say that we are in a profit you are going to 
split up that profit in two parts so the original amount the original book value the value of the equipment in your box is 2500 that 2500 is going to be the part of capital receipt and the income on that the profit from that sale of an equipment is going to be the part of a revenue receipt we normally call it profit on sale proceed of an asset so if you call it profit on sale proceed of an asset that means the profit is part of a revenue that is why you are going to treat it in the revenue receipt got it so the original price of an asset up to the original price of the asset which is 2500 near us today it is going to be the capital receipt and any income over that is going to be the part of revenue receipt now it's a third scenario and it's quite trickier one okay the book value is same 2500 you are having a profit you are able to sell that motor vehicle on 6000 remember the cost price of that asset when we bought was 5000 but you are able to sell it in 6000 happens sometime when we're talking about the gold or some precious ornaments or sometime a unique thing which can be sold on a higher price or the market is behaving really, really positively according to that so let's suppose the book value was 2500 and you are able to sell that in over the cost price even above than the cost price then in this scenario repeat the previous scenario at first two stages first up to the book value up to the book value is treated as a capital expenditure and any additional income up to the cost price any additional income up to the cost price is treated as revenue so income up to the cost price is revenue and any excess income i am using the word excess income and by excess income i mean that over the cost price original even original price of the asset that excess or abnormal profit is going to be treated as capital receipt so in capital receipt up to the book value and the abnormal profits two things are part of capital receipt book value abnormal profits capital receipt and any normal profits is going to be the part of revenue receipt okay so this is again telling you the same thing that up to the book value was a capital receipt excess or abnormal profit is again a capital receipt but the revenue receipt is the part of revenue receipt is something which is called as normal profits which you normally get so this was all about the capital receipt and the revenue receipt and capital expenditure and the revenue expenditure so i'll be sharing a worksheet with you you can find the link of the worksheet in the description of this video or if you want you can follow afzalshad.com and over here there is going to be a topic of capital receipt and revenue receipt or capital expenditure and revenue expenditure and then you can find out a worksheet compiled of the questions both from the capital expenditure and revenue expenditure and capital receipt and the revenue receipts so this is going to be all from my side thank you very much for your time and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to continue receiving the updates on my videos on accounting and business studies you can follow me on afzalshad.com you can follow me on instagram afzal.shad and you can follow me on facebook facebook.com slash business accounting coach thank you very much for your time